Hello everyone, it's Eric from Strong Medicine. Back in July, I posted a video about a woman who had faked having a brain tumor in an attempt to escape prison for some somewhat sociopathic behavior and how some docs on Reddit used footage from a truly abysmal local news report to prove that this was the case. Now, I, I know I'm back in the season of conventional medical education, but I also said that I would post about this story again when there were some updates, and we have some pretty juicy ones. If you haven't seen the original video, I do recommend you start there to appreciate how absolutely nuts this whole saga is, but let me give you a brief recap. In January 2022, a city councilwoman from Aurora, Colorado named Danielle Jerinsky uh, insulted the city's chief of police on a radio show. If you want to quote something, Chief Vanessa Wilson is trash. The following day, a false anonymous tip was made accusing Jerinsky of sexually abusing her child. A police investigation determined that the fake tip was called in by a social services worker for the county named Robin Nicida, who happened to be the police chief's girlfriend at the time. Nicida was arrested and, while waiting trial, was further investigated for additional truly horrific behavior. When it was time for her first criminal trial to start in March of this year, her, her lawyer at the, her lawyers at the time presented evidence to the court that Nicida was incompetent to stand trial due to a large brain tumor. This evidence that they uh, submitted to court uh, included medical records from an oncology clinic in New Mexico and an MRI scan from an ER in Albuquerque. Jurinsky, the councilwoman, she maintained that she did not believe the brain tumor story. So looking at these medical records does not convince you that she has a brain tumor and is incapacitated? No. No, I'm not convinced. There's zero chance that I believe anything that comes from her. And which appears to have triggered Nicita's mother, a woman named Janice Dudley, to give copies of the medical records to a local news station, CBS Colorado. CBS Colorado ran an uncritical and poorly researched story about it in late April, which included an interview with Dudley and the minimally interactive Nicita. Here's some of what Dudley had to say in that interview. You know, I wish people would think or maybe do a little bit of research first before they decide to open their mouth. This is what is going on right now. And there is nothing made up. Well, Ms. Dudley, I took your words to heart and I did do some research. And I discovered proof that your daughter's story was bullshit. Specifically, her supposed MRI scans were photoshopped to include copied and pasted examples of a glioblastoma taken from publicly available images on Wikimedia Commons and Radiopedia.org. And that information, it apparently made its way to the Chief Deputy District Attorney, Daniel Cohen, at which point his office investigated the records and determined that not only was the MRI fake, everything was fake. Her oncology clinic didn't actually exist. Its Facebook page had been created from an IP address belonging to Nicida and her mother. Her supposed doctor's cell phone was a burner that had been purchased using a credit card also belonging to Nicida's mother. And Mr. Cohen, the prosecutor, showed those bogus records and photoshopped MRI scan to a Colorado doctor to confirm that they were in fact bogus. A quick side note here about a tiny but irritating facet of this case that has not before been, been publicly disclosed. A few weeks ago, local news media uh, reported that the specific doctor to whom Mr. Cohen showed Nicita's records was Dr. Coral Steffi from Denver Health Medical Center. This doctor reportedly stated that the tumor did not appear to be medically legitimate due to unlikely size, shape, and area of effect of the claimed glioblastoma. The article that quote comes from doesn't make it unambiguous whether they were quoting Dr. Steffi directly or were quoting Mr. Cohen's summary of Dr. Steffi's assessment. But nevertheless, that phrasing sounded a little strange to me. For one thing, the tumors that were photoshopped into Nicita's normal MRI, they were actually glioblastomas copied from the scans of other real people who actually had the brain tumor. So thus the size and shape were totally legit. So I looked up the doctor, and you might have thought that given what was at stake, the DA's office would have reached out to a, I don't know, a, a neuroradiologist or a neurosurgeon or maybe an adult oncologist. 
the only Coral Steffi who has a license to practice medicine in the state of Colorado is a pediatrician with expertise in child abuse. Now, I have no reason to suspect that Dr. Steffi is anything but a caring, compassionate, and all-around excellent pediatrician, and I'm not trying to insult her in any way whatsoever. But she is not an appropriate person to be recruited by the DA's office to review brain MRIs and adult oncology records on such a high-profile case. Mr. Cohen, I don't want to tell you how to do your job here, but my man, come on. Anyway, moving on. The result of all this was that Nicita got dragged back to court where her prior lawyers quit on her and her new lawyer stated that she was now magically competent again with no explanation given for her miraculous recovery. At which point, Judge David Carpell expressed some, let's say, displeasure with how everything went down and a new trial date was set for August 1st, as in three weeks ago. And that's where we ended the last video. So what has happened since? Former Arapahoe County social worker Robin Nacita now in custody in New Mexico and facing new charges. This all stems from her submitting fake medical documents to the court. Denver 7 Investigates was the only news team there when Nicetta was arrested. That's right, Nicetta has been charged with 10 new counts related to the scam. If she's convicted on all of them, her additional punishment will likely exceed that for the crimes with which she was initially charged in 2022. But there's still more. Janice Grace Dudley turned herself into the Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office. The 67-year-old is the mother of Robin Nasita. She's facing multiple charges, including attempting to influence a public servant. These charges are linked to their daughter's indictment and new criminal charges. That's right. Nicita's mother, Janice Dudley, Ms. There's Nothing Made Up, has also been arrested and charged in participating in this deception. I truly don't mean to gloat or run a victory lap here, but these people, they have done some truly awful things. As just one example, as discussed in the last video, there's an ongoing class action lawsuit against Nicita and Arapahoe County claiming that she had sexually harassed the mothers of children who she herself was investigating in her role as an employee of the county's Department of Social Services. And if those mothers rejected her advances, she then worked to inappropriately separate their families as retribution. Now, to be fair, that particular accusation has not yet had its day in court, but given that there are reportedly 40 plaintiffs against her, I think it's a fair bet that it will be shown to be true. So again, I'm not gloating. I, I don't harbor any hatred for Nicita and Dudley. I've, I've never even met these people. I don't wish them any physical harm. I'm just relieved that justice and accountability are catching up to them. But of course, somehow, there's still more. For one thing, they are now throwing each other under the bus. Dudley's defense appears to be that she herself was also duped by her daughter's brain tumor story. She's since called her daughter diabolical. Dully said that she had been scammed by her daughter, that she was stupid for believing her, and that her daughter must have mental illness. According to one media source, the court has ruled that Nicita and Dully are to have no further contact with one another prior to their trial. I think my favorite update, though, is that uh, after Nicita's most recent uh, arrest, her current lawyer filed a motion that claimed the judge and prosecutor should recuse themselves in the whole case due to a new conflict of interest. You might ask, what is that conflict of interest? Well, the argument here is that since the judge and prosecutor were seemingly duped by Nasita's fake brain tumor story, which itself has resulted in criminal charges, that makes them her victims of those crimes. I'm not a lawyer, but that seems like a real stretch. For one thing, the records are ambiguous as to whether Judge Carpell himself believed the brain tumor story or not, though uh, Mr. Cohen apparently did. Uh, however, I'm sure the judge was, you know, was happy to give to be given an excuse to get himself as far away from this case as possible. So uh, Judge Carpell has indeed recused himself, uh, which has delayed her first trial while, while a new judge is assigned and the case can be fit into their schedule. On the other hand, the prosecutor 
has not been recused. And finally, finally, yes, finally, in the last video, I was really critical of CBS Colorado's coverage and how they doubled down on their blind acceptance of the brain tumor story and how they have refused to acknowledge their mistakes despite it being repeatedly pointed out to them or apologized to Ms. Jarinsky. Well, given that their reporters were the ones who received and published some of these fake medical records, that means they'll likely be witnesses in the second trial of Nicita with Dudley. I expect that Brian Moss is going to find himself on the witness stand. And it will be really fascinating to see how CBS Colorado covers their own reporters testifying under oath about their own incompetence. There is no word yet on when the first of these trials is scheduled to begin, though the second one, the one about falsifying evidence of a brain tumor, is reportedly scheduled for November. That's where the story stands for now. I, I don't anticipate a need for any more updates until after one or both the trials are concluded. But given what's happened so far, you know, who knows what surprises are around the corner.